In today's video, we're doing exactly what you saw in the thumbnail. We are doing a hyperlapse river cruise along the Thames around sunset time, but specifically focusing on the illuminated river project. So to see all the illuminated bridges at night. If you remember around a year ago, the city cruises invited me to do some hyperlapses from the river cruises, but I did them at daytime. They still came out really cool. Well, you can check out the link to that video in this corner, but I really always wanted to improve on two things. First up was to actually hyperlapse going forward to somehow mount the cameras uh, on the bow of the bridge. And secondly, I really just wanted to do a nighttime hyperlapse because now, especially with all the bridges that are part and already finished in terms of the stage two or stage three of the illuminated river project, they look spectacular at night and they just illuminate all the surroundings and sort of colorful and they change their light. They're just so cool. So to hyperlapse along the river going underneath all these bridges would just be the coolest thing ever. And these dreams requirements of mine to get the coolest hyperlapse ever do come with some challenges. The settings, the interval, the shutter speed might be a little bit tricky. The crew's going to be an hour and a half into the night. And if I want to shoot the hyperlapse at one second interval to keep at least half a second shutter, well, that will result in about 5,400 images exactly. 90 minutes at 60 images every minute. And that also isn't a big problem because a 256 gig card will actually hold 5,200, 5,300 images if I let it run to another card. But we're gonna be cruising around sunset, so it's the settings into the night that will be a problem. So if I don't want to touch the camera and use aperture priority with a manual lens, I will only be able to control it with the ISO because I do want to start with at least a half a second exposure. But then when it gets to nighttime, it will be at half second exposure and the ISO will be crazy, which is something I don't want. So I'm gonna put a variable ND and I will have to end up actually moving the variable ND somehow throughout the hyperlapse. But then if I leave a camera somewhere where it's not accessible at the bow of the boat, even if they let me, yeah, well, I won't be able to adjust absolutely anything. I could shoot it in P mode, but that will introduce lens flicker that I actually don't want either because I had been using a fully automatic lens on the last trip that I didn't would not want to unscrew my lens. And that resulted while I was doing the deflicker in some weird dimming when I was going underneath bridges. Didn't like that effect. And it's good to also go on this river cruise with friends, Fabian and Charles there. We are somehow the first to board the boat and we're going all the way to the top deck because we've spotted a railing that we probably will be able to hyperlapse from. We got approved. We're on the top deck on the bow of the ship and we got loads of places to clamp cameras. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I'm here with Andrew, Vince from BBC, Fabian and even Effie is over there. And our captain, Richard, who's very kind to actually let us be here in front. Let me run you through the setup that I ended up with. Uh, Z6 with the variable ND behind the lens, 12 millimeter, I've set it at F4, and the uh, variable ND is roughly at almost full max seven and a half stops, because I'd never go to eight, because uh, it introduces some vignetting. Um, everything is clamped on the Manfrotto Super Clamp, and I've got a Peak Design leash that just makes it not fall, just in case, worst case scenario. So yeah, pretty pleased with this and best please with the fact that actually I will be able to change settings on the variable and the as the ISO starts creeping up. So that should let it run for the whole duration of the trip. The next four minutes of this video is a B-roll montage of passing underneath all the illuminated bridges, the sights we could see along the river, as well as some more settings updates. So I invite you to chill and watch along. I can't even believe how cotton candy sky we get literally in front where we're hyperlapsing. 
How rare is that? However, if you're just watching it for the best bit, for the hyperlapse, then jump into the last chapter at 9 minutes and 42 seconds to enjoy the cherry on top of that cruise cake. This approach towards Westminster Bridge coming from the west is such a phenomenal view, especially with the green underlit Westminster Bridge. It just looks spectacular. I know I've abused that word in my vlogs, but, but this, this truly is. This behind me is my favorite bridge. This green really looks so cool. Big Ben, not yet uncovered, but you know what I mean, it will be eventually. How cool is this? That is so cool. And this view, now check that out. Now is that cool or what? And we're now approaching Tower Bridge. All the bridges that we passed on, it just looked so beautiful. Round about Battersea, when we were reversing, I actually took off the uh, variable ND and just put the F to Z adapter. And this enabled me to shoot at 1.6 second shutter, two second interval, but my ISO now is low at around 500. It's hovering about 500, 800. So I think this was a good choice, good move. Um, I don't know if the images will be too dark. I think 1.6 seconds at this slow speed will be good. So yeah, really high hopes for that time lapse. This is a pretty decent view. Not, not that up chin angle, but off tower bridge, of course. And I think the last turn that we're gonna be doing now is to reverse and go right back towards Tower Bridge and park back at Tower Pier. More, more at Tower Pier. And we are done. I had a quick preview of the high flaps and it's looking good. So yeah, now I just can't wait to start editing it, especially the uh, sunset one, because with the fluffy cotton clouds that were just above us, it just looked incredible.
And this is it, the final 2 minute long high pullouts, tower pair to 9 elms to calorie wharf and back to tower pair. Sit back, relax and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, trick the algorithm into thinking that this video was semi-decent and worth recommending to others by smashing that like button. And if you like these kind of illuminations, laser shows or 3D projections, check out this playlist of videos I've done about just such events in London and elsewhere. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.